And now our next speaker is somebody who has been paying careful attention to what people around him are saying. <laughs> Uh, which, if I read the news properly, is becoming a rarer and rarer thing these days. The Peace Prize, as you know, was awarded for the, the authors of the uh, study called On the Reception and Detection of Pseudo-Profound Bullshit. Please welcome Nathaniel Barr. All right, afternoon, everybody. Uh, I got a lot of bullshit to cover in five minutes, so let's make it <laughs> uh, First place to start, what is bullshit? What isn't it? Uh, we uh, drew from Harry Frankfurt's uh, classic manuscript on bullshit to get an academic technical definition to work with. Um, so he described bullshit as something constructed without any concern for the truth. And this is different than lying, right? Because if you want to lie, you have to know what the truth is and go against it. You have to subvert the truth. Whereas bullshit is just talking without any concern whatsoever for the truth. You know, trying to impress rather than inform. Um, so, you know, probably don't need any convincing of this, but bullshit's everywhere. Um, <laughs> You know, we can look at the fact checking of uh, presidential nominees and debates and whatnot. You know, some of that's lying, but a lot of it's bullshitting. Um, healthcare is a prominent area of bullshit as well. Um, you might know Dr. Oz. He claimed this green coffee would make you lose weight. Turns out that's bullshit. Um, there was actually a, an interesting study in the British Medical Journal that found that actually less than half of what they were um, claiming to be true on his show was actually supported by any evidence. When he was put before Congress, he actually said, he sees himself as a cheerleader, right? So he's trying to sort of impress upon people things without any concern for the truth, right? Now, I think it's probably clear that, you know, I told you what bullshit is, um, it's ubiquitous, but no one had really tapped into this from a psychological perspective and asked, who's gonna believe bullshit? The real starting point for us was, uh, some of you might recognize this guy, it's Deepak Chopra. He, uh, he actually won an Ig Nobel back in the 90s for his creative uh, interpretation of the term quantum. Um, so, you know, he has books like Ageless Body, Timeless Mind, Quantum Healing, uh, Soul of Leadership, and he gets called out a lot for not really caring about the truth, right? So, for example, he says a lot of stuff like this. Attention and intention are the mechanics of manifestation. Hashtag Now. Some people have kind of taken to this, and um, there's this interesting website that actually um, generates things like this. The future is the path to a symbolic representation of Marvel. And how they do this, this site's called Wisdom of Chopra, which pulls, <laughs> it pulls buzzwords from his Twitter feed and rearranges them into syntactically valid sentences. So, when you actually think about the definition of bullshit from the philosophical tradition, we realize that something constructed absent any concern for the truth, this an algorithm that generates this, this, this sort of fits what we thought was the true definition of bullshit. Um, and we called it, we fancied this to be a particular kind, there's probably many types of bullshit, we call this the pseudo-profound. Um, so what we did is we pulled, and there's another um, website similar called um, the New Age Bullshit Generator. So we pulled from Wisdom of Chopra and the New Age Bullshit Generator, and we gave people statements like this. And this is constructed by an algorithm. Hidden meaning transforms unparalleled abstract beauty. Quite simply, what we did is we asked people, how profound do you think that is? <laughs> One, not at all profound, and five, very profound. And so we pulled these from this website. We got a scale developed. Um, we called it the Bullshit Receptivity Scale. Um, it's a very uh, sound scale, psychometrically speaking. Um, one thing that's kind of fun is people find, so on the scale, the bullshit is rated uh, somewhere between somewhat and fairly profound. So people like it. Um, so our study is pretty straightforward. We're interested. Um, do people rate bullshit as profound? If we get a scale, it seems they do. Um, is it reliable? Yeah, the scale was great. Um, and then we, we turn to the next question. Um, does this correlate with conceptually relevant variables? So um, we looked at analytic thinking, intelligence, and skepticism about supernatural and religious uh, belief. And so we basically gave people this and we correlated some things. So you probably know where I'm going with this. People who were less analytic and more intuitive rated the bullshit as more profound. Those who were less intelligent found it more profound. And those who were more skeptical were more resistant to the bullshit. Um, 
So we did some discrimination. We're, we're psychologists. We got serious about this. Is it the case that it's just because they find everything profound or is it specific to bullshit? So we decided to give people some other things. So um, we have our pseudo profound bullshit items. We also gave people motivational quotations as well as some mundane statements. And we do find there's a general thing where people who find anything profound find the bullshit profound. But there is some interesting findings where we look at the relation between analytic thinking style, negative correlation with the bullshit, um, no relation with the motivational quotes and the mundane stuff. So another way to look at this, oh, and by the way, people do find the bullshit almost as profound as the real <laughs> motivational quotes. Um, <laughs> but when we look at this, we can split this in half by the intuitive subjects and the more reflective subjects. And for um, the reflective or analytic people, they find on the right there, the profound quotes to be more profound than the bullshit. Whereas for intuitive people, they're not discriminating at all. So we think that analytic thinking allows us to be sensitive to pseudo profound bullshit. Um, just for some examples, um, only those who will risk, oh yeah, we got interrupted. Okay, so there's some Thank examples. Thank you, Nathaniel. Last thing, I'm doing it with this. Deepak Chopra, we used his real tweets and the correlation between profundity ratings for his tweets and our bullshit scale was 0.88. Um, so I had to get that. So anyways, we can study bullshit as psychologists um, and we should probably start taking it seriously. So check out the paper. Thanks. <laughs> and here's our team. Are there any questions? <laughs> Just raise your arm and Deepak's wait. not here, is he? <laughs> Hi, as I seem to remember from my high school class, and maybe this was the scholar that you cited, there are actually three levels of shit. Chicken shit, bullshit, and elephant shit. Oh. Are you planning to uh, expand your research into these other levels? <laughs> I think it's probably important, you know. Um, like I said, we, we focused on the pseudo-profound because it seemed such a perfect opportunity given that these websites exist and as I said it really fits well in that academic definition but we we're hoping you know of course this is research that makes you laugh and that make you think but we're hoping that other researchers start to think about all those levels of shit that permeate our lives and can try and find ways to scientifically dive in deeply but yeah good question. <laughs> that was a perfectly pseudo profound question was it not? <laughs> Next question can you relate this also to like conspiracy theories and conspiracy theorists? And if so, can you please talk to my mom? <laughs> Actually, we did include a measure of conspiratorial thinking. Um, it does indeed correlate with finding the bullshit profound. However, it was, it was um, part of our receptivity. So they found everything profound, the people that were conspiratorially minded. Um, the, true, the true things that really were specific to the pseudo profound bullshit were the analytic thinking and the skepticism. But yeah, we do find a correlation between their profundity ratings and the extent to which they buy into conspiracies. Good question, it's in the paper, check it out. Um, okay. So it seems like you used a lot of kind of tweet length um, statements. Um, and I wonder if, have you studied whether there's any correlation between the length of the statement and people's ability to distinguish between actually profound statements and pseudo profound? Yeah, that's a great question. We haven't, but you know, there is, um, sort of like literary uh, work that sort of assesses the use of vague statements and things like that in the body of a longer work. So it's, it's sort of an effective literary device to get the reader thinking about things. But uh, yeah, there's no empirical work yet. You know, we're really just uh, beginning the study of bullshit, I'd say. But yeah, it's a great question. Okay, one more question now. Are you familiar with uh, Stephen, the great uh, philosopher Stephen Colbert? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The and truthiness. Not, truthiness. Isn't this a kind of, isn't truthiness sort of a non-scatological version of what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's lots of connections to other existing things for sure. Another one is uh, Carl Sagan talked about baloney detection as well. Um, you know, yeah, if you know Colbert, tell him to give us a call. We'd love to talk about bullshit. <laughs> and truthiness, so, uh, but yeah, great question. Yeah, there's, that's the nice thing about this work is we think that it ties into a lot of the existing work on persuasion, lying. Um, you know, it's really, it's been as of yet an untapped uh, resource in psychological science. So hopefully, you know, if any researchers are here, uh, give us a call if you want to do some research on bullshit. So, yeah. thanks. Hey, thank you. If you have further questions, yeah. If you have further questions, stick around. And, and Nathaniel, one question that I'm sure everybody wants to know the answer of. What are you doing Monday night? Monday night? 
I don't know, I'm open to invitations. Well, it's the first presidential debate. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I had assumed that you were flooded with invitations from news organizations uh, to sit in and, and commentate on. Yeah, no invites yet, but you know, we're a team of Canadian scientists, so we're trying to avoid all this bullshit down here. But uh, <laughs> um, I should add, um, one, one great um, thing that happened after is this, this paper's been cited quite a few times in the year since we published it, but there's a great paper that was published called um, Misperceiving Bullshit as Profound is Associated with Favorable Views of Cruz, Rubio, Trump, and Conservatism. So this is a peer-reviewed article that was published uh, after ours. So, you know, if you want to know how politics and bullshit uh, relate, it's already been done too. So if check any, that out. If anyone here is friendly with somebody who um, produces a, a radio or television news program, this is the perfect guest to have on Monday night. So please, please let them know. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.